Hello, this is Robert Messina, and I've stumbled on the notion that um, this idea about the number six, the number of man, the mark of the beast, it's getting closer and closer, and uh, it needs some kind of um, emphasis at least in how it's how the number six is used in the Bible. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, Revelation 13, the last verse in the chapter. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. Six hundred and sixty-six. Okay? It's the number of a man, a specific man, and that specific man is the uh, Antichrist, the man. There's Antichrist, the entity, which is many many people, many members, which is, I, I'm going to just say it. I mean, there's explanations, and I'm, I'm just going to say it. I mean, I'm, I'm very positive about it. Antichrist beast is in, is in reality now. It began in 1945. It's the United Nations, okay? And uh, I'm I'm not going to describe it. If you if you want this more description of it and why I'm saying that, ask me in the comments, okay? Because I've already said it many times. Anyway, it's the number of a man, and that man is alive today. And I believe that again, it's King Charles. Now he's King Charles. He used to be Prince Charles. And, and by the way, as far as the number, counting the number of the beast, the, the number of the man, counting his number, uh, it was revealed uh, by uh, Tim Cohen, and I think uh, Monty Judah had a lot to say about it too, uh, that they counted. I never bothered counting. I always thought that there was wisdom without, there was the wisdom without, and there is. The, the You don't even need to count it, but the fact that you count up the gematria, the Hebrew and the Greek gematria of <clears throat> Prince Charles of Wales. Prince Charles of Wales. <clears throat> if you add that up in the in the Hebrew, if if you had to say Prince Charles of Wales in Hebrew, you would get the you would come up with six hundred and sixty six. Okay, so, and there's lots of other other things about Prince Charles, and Tim Cohen brings all of that out, and I'm, you know, you're gonna have to look that up. Okay, it's uh, Antichrist and a cup of tea, and that was many years ago, and I remember seeing seeing that, and uh, it held my attention, and I always kept my eye out <coughs> for Prince Charles. I also thought at the time it was uh, back in the days of Gorbachev. Gorbachev made me think about it too. So if you see a video and I'm, I mention, I'll mention both of them as possible candidates. But but right right now, it's Prince Charles. So there's something special about the number six, and it seems to be the the number for men. And uh, I'm going to tell you right, right off the beginning, right now, I'll tell you right now what I think the wisdom is. And the wisdom has to do with the sixth day. Sixth day ends, and then the seventh day begins. And the seventh day is when the rest happens. We rest in the Lord. We rest in the Lord on the seventh day. We rest with him. It is when he has his millennium. It's, it's a thousand years, and it's not so much rest. The real rest is after the thousand years, 
and the, the, the new Jerusalem comes down from heaven, that's going to be the complete marriage, right? The, the millennium is more like the, the um, engagement. It's an engagement. And we're going to be, we're still, we're still in the flesh on the millennium. And in, in the new Jerusalem, I don't see us being flesh anymore. We're just going to be his spirit, the Father's spirit, the Son is spirit, and the Lamb is spirit, and the Bride is spirit. That's the New Jerusalem, and it comes down as a building. It's it's something that is never really described. Uh, there's plenty of I have plenty of videos on on the millennium, the thousand years. I want to uh, let you see that. The seventh day rest of God has not come yet. All right? Let's, let's just take a look at Genesis 131. Now, this is, this is the end of the sixth day after he created the sixth day. He looks, and God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So there's two things. One is, it was very good. And this is the first time he says, says very. The, all the rest of the days, he, he saw them, and they were good. He saw them, and they were good. But this one, the, he says it's very good. Okay, now, if you think that there were six normal days, six 24-hour days that we have 24 hours in, and believe me, Adam lived in 24-hour days. He did. But God didn't. Before he, before he came to create, he always lived. And after he is finished, he always lives. He is, he was, and he is to come. There is no, there is no end. There was no beginning nor end to neither the Father, the Son, nor the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. There's no end to them. The angels have a beginning. And the angels have, and the angels can have an end if they disobey. All those demons, one third, they're all going to die. They're all going go into the same place that sinners go. The lake of fire. It's it's okay to it's great to be an angel, an angel of God, always living with God, always always seeing things, always being glad, always glorifying Him. There's nothing wrong with being an angel. It's just that they don't create, and they the only thing they can do is obey. They can't. They don't have any. They don't have a will of their own like we do. We have a will of our own. But our will should be lined up with the will of God. A anyway, um, so you could see, you could see that um, he's introducing a beast that, and he gives a warning: you can't buy or sell without this number. It is. A, he's just talking about a great tribulation. He's talking about a great tribulation. Is that very good? Okay, if, if why and why couldn't he see this part? He's he's God. He knows this part. He knows the beginning and the end. So you mean to tell me he you know he makes the God, uh, uh, he makes the man, he makes the woman. Of course, it says the woman too. By the way, in twenty four hours, you think it's all twenty four hours, regular hours, like we have? No, it's not. So in other words. He has to be working in time, the same kind of time we have. Once he says, let's there be light, there has to be a second. All right? And I'm going to get to that a little later. I'm just going to, uh, uh, it'll come up about that second. I'm gonna, now I'm going to start mentioning the relative sixes that, we, that the Bible the relative ones. There's plenty of sixes in it, but, you know, the number of men and the number of uh, this tribe and that tribe, lots of sixes. But there are certain sixes that get, that are outstanding. Okay. Genesis 6, 7. 
Noah was 600 years old when the floods of waters were upon the earth. There's one right there. Noah's life, he was 600 years old. And there's more to it. Uh, Genesis 7, 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were open. So how many days was that? Let's assume his first month after the 600 years is 30 days. And the 17th day of the second month would be 47 days it begins to rain and everybody's caught in the rain basically eight sixes after his 600th birthday everybody's caught in the rain they were marrying and giving in marriage right up until the day of the flood now Noah was born 1,056 years since Adam. And I have all that counted out there for you. It's all in the Bible. The flood begins when Noah is 600 years old. So 1,056 he's born. 600 years later, it's going to be 1,656 years since Adam. All right, so that that number is multiples of, of six as well. It's six times 46, which is 276. And 276 times six is 1656 years. Okay, and, and uh, Genesis eight thirteen, And it came to pass in the 600th year and first year in the first month of the first day of the month, if you don't count the first day of the first month that, that he looks out and sees everything's dry. So a whole year goes by, and how, how many days is that? Okay, that's what I'm going to count right now. So it's 354 days in a, lun in a lunar, in, tw in, a, in a 12 month year. There's six 30 day months and six 29 day months. And you have to add them all together, and um, you're going to get 354, which is 6 times 59 days. All right? So it's multiple of 6. And uh, <clears throat> just as uh, an interesting part is that you remember that um, the 70 weeks of Daniel, from the, from the command to re restore Jerusalem to Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. And he stops. And then he says, and 62 weeks. Okay? So y y y mo most people just add them up as 69. They don't even, they don't even consider the fact that it's said, tw it's, they, they don't even consider the, the, the gap. There's a gap between the seven weeks and the 62 weeks. And that gap turns out to be 40 years. So the promise of Messiah was going to be seven weeks after the command of Cyrus, by the way. It's the, after the command of Cyrus, not Nehemiah. Nehemiah is important, but not the command from Cyrus. is the important start. So you start from that year to um, Messiah, and you're going to come to... Um, Seven weeks, and then you're going to, that's seven weeks of decades. And um, then you're going to go for another 62 weeks, and it doesn't have to be decades anymore, and it doesn't have to be years or anything like that. And I, and I see that as 62 weeks of months. And I'm saying this here because it's got the, the number of months involved with this. So 62 months times times a week 
62 weeks of months is going to be 62 times 7, which is going to be 434 months. Now, so 434 months times the number of days in a month, and you have to be exact on the number of days a month is, and it's 29.531 days in a month. So that goes from uh, new moon to new moon. So anyway, when you do that multiplication, you get to 12,816 point four five four days now if you divide twelve thousand eight hundred and sixteen point four five four days by thirty three hundred and sixty five point twenty five days now we're going back to the solar year that's just because it makes it simpler you'll get thirty five point zero eight nine years or almost exactly 35 years. So, in other words, that's 35 years was the time Jesus was born until the time he went up into heaven. And I have, again, you got to ask me, where is this? But this one here, I mean, it's in, in 62 weeks. There's a video I have out. The name of it is N62 Weeks. Back to Genesis 8.13. So, he says, the waters were dried up from off the face of the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Okay, so now it's a new, fresh earth, and we have eight souls that are saved, and we start replenishing the earth. Another 66 uh, number was Genesis 46:26. All the souls that came with Jacob into Egypt, which came out of his loins, besides Jacob's sons, wives, all the souls were three score and six, 66 souls. Exodus 14, 7, And he, Pharaoh, took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. So 600 chosen chariots chariots to go after the people of Israel. Again, an enemy, 666. Exodus 29, 11. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that, there, all that in them is. And he rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. Okay, so he's, he's pointing to something that is future for us, but it's not future for him because he has no future. Everything, everything is one day for him. And that's why, that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. Because he talks about it like he already rested, but he didn't, re I mean, he did already rest, but, he, but we, we didn't rest with him yet. Okay, now let's look at the, the menorah. Exodus 25, 32 through 34. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of one side and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knop and a flower in one branch. So you have the bowl, the knop, and the flower, all of that is part of the, uh, you would see that on an almond tree. You would see the bowl, the knop, and the flower, three parts. The fruit of the almond is inside the knop. It's being supported by the bowl, and it has the flower, which helped uh, generate the whole thing. So anyway, you can see there's nine parts per branch with three bowls plus three knops plus three flowers times three would be 27 parts in each of the two branches, one on the left, one on the right, one in the west, one in the, one in the east, one in the west, okay? Both sides of the, of the main 12 
part middle branch and that's so it's uh it says and in the candlestick the main middle branch shall be four bowls made like unto almonds with their knops and their flowers okay so so you have again you have the bowl the knop and the flower and there's four in the middle branch so four times three is twelve so there's twelve parts in the middle so you have a total of 27 parts on the eastern side plus the 12 parts in the middle branch that makes 39 books in the Tanakh and then you have the the 27 books on the on the western side branch and there's 27 books in the New Testament so you can see the Bible is there in case you didn't see I have another one on the I have a thing on the candlesticks but the, you know there's a lot more to be said on that is why I say that okay first Samuel 17 4 okay now we're talking about enemies of God now and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath whose height was six cubits and a span so you see, his height has six cubits. And they say that he's about 14 feet tall. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. Okay, and now there's another description of uh, a cousin of Goliath, Goliath or something like that. And he says, uh, that's First Chronicles 20, verse 6. And yet again, there was, a, there was war at Gath. And there was a man of great stature whose fingers and toes were four and twenty. So you have six on each hand, six on each foot. And he was also the son of of the giant. All right, so there he is. He's they're multiplying. Okay, First Kings ten fourteen. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. That's a lot of gold, but it weight the weight of it is the number of six hundred sixty six. 666 is the weight of gold. The gold is money, and money is the root. The love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? So that's got the brand of the... the I don't like that the Bible... The menorah represents the Bible, and it's got 66 parts. And gold represents something good, and it has 66 parts. But... um. These are both things that are good here that, that are for the sixth day. The Bible is for the sixth day. The gold is for the sixth day. And uh, we're going to have a seventh where we don't have it. We don't have, need either one of them anymore. The knowledge of the Lord would be like the, the waters that cover the sea. Okay, Daniel 3, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits, that's 60 cubits, and the breadth thereof, six cubits. So it's 60, 60 plus six. You see, it's got the number six in, in the image that he makes. He set it up in the plain of Dora in the, plain, in the province of Babylon. Now, later on, he's going to cause everybody to bow down and worship this image that he makes all right and uh, Shadrach Meshach and Abednego did not go for it they were thrown into the fiery furnace but they didn't burn they didn't die, and they didn't die they didn't burn and and they didn't they were lifted out and they didn't even smell the smoke so they were doing the right thing, obeying and believing God, not denying him, not bowing down to an image, and they were doing the right thing. Let me skip over to um, the idea that when he 
when God said, let there be light, and he did that on the first day. So um, before the first day, there was eternity. There was nothing. The earth was void, and, you know, there was no earth. The earth, there was an earth in the, in the mind of God that he wanted to create an earth. It was in the mind of God that he wanted to create man. It was in the mind of God that he wanted to make a bride for his, for his son. And, and, I, and that's really what, it was all, what it's all about. It's not good for a man to be alone, and, and it's not good for his son to be alone, and that's another video I have out there. But anyway, what I'm saying here right now is when he said, let there be light, light has a speed. To go from point A to point B, there is a certain amount of time that it takes. No matter, no matter how close that it is, there's a certain amount of time. And light travels 186,000 miles per second. Now, there's a lot of, a lot of sixes in, in that number in itself. Because 60,000 plus 60,000 plus 60,000 plus 6,000 is how many miles it goes per second. And the second is, a, is an amazing thing in the sense that it, oh, it's, it doesn't change. You can't change a second. A second is going to be a second, no matter what. And forget about space-time. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't stretch or anything like that. That's all, that's all gibberish. A second is a second. And light travels so many miles per second. And this is it, 1,860,000 1 miles per second. 60,000 60, plus 60,000 plus 60,000 plus 6,000. Now, let's get back to the second. You have 60 seconds, and then you get a minute. You have 60 minutes, and you get an hour. And you want to you want to go from an hour to a day? Well, you have six plus six hours per night, and you have six plus six hours per day. The evening, twelve hours, six plus six, and the day, twelve hours, six plus six. You have six plus six plus six plus six days per month. In other words, if you have a thirty-day month. It's six plus six is five sixes. Six plus six plus six plus six. And then what about the a, a year? You have six plus six, which is twelve, times the five sixes in a month, and that'll give you a year. Twelve, six plus six times thirty. Six plus six plus six plus six days per year, three hundred and sixty days. That's that's a prophetic year. It's not an actual year, but they use that number, three hundred and sixty days. That's why I say it's a prophetic year. Okay, before I move on, I want to highlight what you guys just saw, and with your own eyes and own ears, about what a second happens to be. And it was made on the very first day when God said, let there be light, because light needs that second. And it's a unit of time. And it's a unit of time that describes the light as being defiled with the sixth number. I'm going to say defiled. Because it's not seven number. It's a, man, it's a number of, a man, of men. That's how, so that's our light. And it's our time. It's all of our minutes, hours, days, and months and years. It's all in there. Everything that we have to do with time is in case with that, begins with that second. Which was made on the very first day of creation, and it's still, and, and we are still in the sixth day. 
Everybody that you know was born in this day, the sixth day. This is the sixth, still the sixth day, is what I'm trying to point out. A lot of people are still going to miss it because they're so ingrained to think that the, the six days of God were the same exact six days that we have. Well, why would he, why would he do that? It's not like that in heaven. Nathan went up there for 15 minutes, and they, they told him about every second of his 15 years and in his judgment. So that it's definitely different. Right there, it's different. That's just one example, and there's lots of examples. Okay? So, we can't blame it on the second. We can't blame it on, on the fact that we, are, we, we have two lights going on in the world. We have the, the light of this world, which is made with seconds, and we have the light of his world, which has no second, which has no time. It's all one, it's described, it's described as one day. Okay. Revelation 8, 7 through 10. And the first angel sounded, and there, was, and there followed fire, hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast up, cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up. And all green grass was burnt up. So when he says the third part of the trees were burnt up, what was left? 66.6666666% was left. So what's left? You want the sixth day? Well, here it is. No, uh, these are your trees. You, you have six. You like the number six? You want to stay here? You want to stay in this world? And you don't want to go into the seventh day? Here, 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 this is how many trees you're going to have. Now, you're going to have, you only, you, one third of the trees are going to be gone, and you're only going to have 66.7% left. And that goes on and on, though, as far as the destructions go in, in, the, um, in the trumpets. The second angel sounded, and it was a great, it, and, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. How much was left? 66.6666666% was left. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had, and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there, there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. So the third part of the rivers, how much was left of the rivers? Well, you're going to get, you want the six? Well, we're going to have 66.6666% of all the rivers that used to have. Now you're going to have uh, uh, that many. Because you like six, right? You want this world, right? It's about to end. This is revelation. This is about. This is in the last seven years. It's about to end, and you want to keep. You don't want to listen to those two witnesses that are trying to tell you something. Okay, uh, Revelation eight twelve. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, the third part of the moon, the third part of the stars, and, and the third part of them was darkened. And, and, the, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. You, you, you can still have the sun, but it's only 66.66%. And, and there's going to be a third part of the day that you're not even going to get the heat and the warmth of that sun. All right? Which means everything's going to get colder. And wait until the sun gets completely shut off, because not too far after this time, not too much longer. There's not going to be a sun. The sun. There's not going to be stars. Not going to be a moon. Nothing. You're going to be cast into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, because they're freezing. There's no sun. There's nothing. It's, it's, there's nothing out there. I can't wait to see the faces 
on the professors that taught the kind in physics that taught me about how far the stars were billions and billions and billions of light years away and took billions and billions and billions of years for it all to come to happen after a big bang. And they're going to see the stars roll up like a scroll right before their eyes? Yeah, they are. Are they going to be surprised? Yeah, they are. They're going to scratch their heads and they're going to cry. And they're going to know they were wrong. What's going on here? Uh, we, we, we thought there was a redshift that and, and we went by how far how much the redshift was and it told us how far away it was. We did it for science. Okay. Well you could throw that science away. It lied. And you were a liar. Somebody was a liar. Somebody knew someone. And maybe it was only Satan who knew. Because that guy knows everything. But he lies though a lot. Yeah, you're going to be surprised. It took billions and billions and billions. And the, the sun, the sun was made. Oh, I mean, I just got, I got, again, I got videos on this stuff. I explain, I debunk these guys. Yeah, I'm just going to say, they, they, they're they going to be very, very shocked. They're going to be shocked that it took so long. That, I mean, in their mind, they, they believe it. They believe that it took billions of years and those stars are billions and billions of years away they believe that they they don't believe that the sun is the greatest it's not a, it's not a mediocre they don't believe a lot of things that are true the earth is still the earth is in the center it's just oh, there's a lot of there's a lot on this but they are going to be surprised when they see no more sun no more moon no more stars and they are in the outer darkness because anybody that has not written the book of life is going to be in the outer darkness. And the outer darkness is darkness because there is no more sun and we are getting the light of the world from the light of the world, the original light of the world, the one who was the light of the world before the light of the world was made, before the sun was, before the light, before the first day. I could go on and on. And I do. I will go on and on. Forever. <laughs> this is uh, warnings. Uh, this is written for, for you to straighten up. Disciple yourself. Read the book. Get your oil in your lamp. That's what this is all about. It's, no, it's not uh, all of a sudden it comes upon you. But it'll, be, it'll all of a sudden come upon you if, if you were duped into thinking that you were going to get raptured before any of this happened. I, even though you have nice, handsome men of God that, you know, that dress nice and everything, talk nice, if they teach that, they don't know what they're talking about. And they're duping. The, the blind lead, lead the blind. I'm sorry to say it, but there's, uh, there's a lot of people that do see it. And that's good. He, he, and and I know with everybody, everybody's comment is usually, I I'm I'm going to trust God, and either way, either way, if I'm trusting God, I'll be okay. And you, you're right. That's right. But this read this book. Blessed are those that read this book. And 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 those that take away from the book are going to get cursed by the curses that are in this book. So if you if you have somebody that says, you don't even have to read it, we're going to be out of here. Oh, don't even worry about that. We're going to be out of here. Okay, that is taking it away from the book. That's, that's taking it away. Sorry. I don't see. Uh, that's exactly how I see it. It's, it's, this is for edification, for building up, discipling yourself. Revelation 9, 15, and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day, a month and a year for to slay a third part of the men. So who again, who's left? 66.666. And a third part of the men, that's a lot of men. And yeah, but uh, a fourth part of the, of 
of all life, the, the creatures and, and all the animals, everything, everything that had breath in the, in, the fourth, in the fourth seal, the middle of the fourth seal, when Antichrist, the man, exalts himself in, in, the, in, the, holy, in the holy place. That's the abomination of death. By the mercies of God, those days were shortened so otherwise no flesh would be saved so he's good to us yes he's good to us okay not Re revelation 9 18 by these were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issue issued out of their mouth okay that's just a continuation i mean i'm 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 skipping, of course, I'm skipping a couple of verses for, for, for time's sake. It's for you to, to uh, catch up. I don't want to take away from the book. I'm not taking it just because I'm skipping over a couple of verses. Revelation 12, 4. And his tail drew a third part of the stars. The, the, uh, this, this is the dragons. This is the red dragon that's, that's described in Revelation 12. His tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. So that means that there's 66.6666 good angels left. That's for that's for us, and we you know we got a, a few less angels when he did that. And the angels, the and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child. As, as soon as it was, that's Jesus. The woman was, I, I usually think of her as Sarah. The birth of Israel and Jesus came through the, the people of Israel. And he was, and they were his people. And the, the way they blessed the world is they gave us all. They gave the whole world, including themselves, the Messiah. They didn't give it to them. The, the, a woman birth um, the son of man okay revelation 14 9 uh, through 11 and the third angel fouled with them saying with a loud voice if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture in, in, into the cup of indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So that's a pretty good omen. They're telling you what's going to happen if you do. I mean, if, if you... And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whoever, whosoever receives the mark of his name. So both of them, both of the temptations are right here. Worship the beast and his image, and also receiving the mark of his name. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Now this is the second beast now. Okay, Revelation 13, 11 through 18. And I beheld another beast come, coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spoke as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. And he deceives them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all 
both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their hand and or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. So I was end with that verse that I started with, and there is the wisdom of it. And a lot of this, I again, if you want more uh, on this particular part here, um, I, I do expand and, and uh, help clarify some of it. Again, you're going to just ask, just ask in the comments. Okay? So, uh, I think it's, am it's amazing that number six is just there's a lot of things about it. And uh, I hope I enabled you to see what I see as in some of the marbles in the, in the number six. Shalom, everybody. Bye-bye.